wooden bikes are traditional. A lot of times they're larger, and these are the kid size. And this is really interesting at Kazozo Nikawa, is for their nursery, they use these banana skins to make their own nursery pots for new coffee plants. Many times these are made out of plastic and they're kind of torn and discarded and they end up in the coffee fields. So in my 17 years in coffee, I'd never seen somebody make their own pots from banana skins wrapped around a bottle, which of course is an Amstel beer bottle. All right, kids. So many kids. This is what you call the reception area of Kazoza Nikawa which is a washing station in the northern part of Burundi. What's happening here is the farmers are bringing in their coffee cherry that they've picked that day and it's going to be weighed and recorded on these pink sheets over here. Every farmer is a member and the coffee they bring is recorded for payment later. This kind of coffee cherry here that you see is a really fantastic uniform ripe quality of picking that you don't find in many countries. And I'll show you why it's such a good quality. Essentially this cooperative has the farmers, before they deliver their cherry, float them in water to remove the, the light coffee, which is low quality, and then hand pick on these beds where they drain the water out and pick out the greenish underripe coffee. Now some of the underripes are removed by machines. Here they use uh, panagos from Colombia, which is called an eco-pulper because it uses very little water. And this particular station doesn't have a great supply of water. So they need to rely on this more modern processing technology, which has a kriba. This barrel is a, is a drum that helps to remove underripes by retaining them inside of the barrel while the ripe coffee that has been pulped can pass through. But really it's the hand sorting that's determining much of the quality of the coffee coming from this particular washing station, which we've purchased for several years now. Those are the red skins being dispatched there, which will go to compost returning it to the farmers to use on their trees. And this uh, is the pulped and demucilaged coffee. That is actually the mucilage, the creamy brown goop, is the fruity layer that sticks to the coffee that the machines were moving. It's too bad because it's filled with pectins, you could really use that. In contrast, this is actually a different station where they're using a washing channel because they have a, a water resource. But what's great about Kazoza Nikawa is they don't remove 100% of the mucilage with their machine. And they also um, soak the coffee overnight. These are defects that you can see 
in the uh, Kozozo Nikawa wet coffee. This is Antestia. Some of the damage from the insect. Some of these are underripe, and some of the greenish ones are just uh, are just a kind of normal from the pigmentation of the fruit color. There's cherry skins, and there's some coffee here that had the skin removed, and that's what shade drying. When you start drying in the shade when the coffee's wet, that's why it's so good, as you can see these defects.